Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. So, that was about two days ago I posted a video about the 2020 Street Glide and really what I was hoping is coming from Harley with that bike. A lot of this stuff is obviously lofty, probably unrealistic expectations. Some of the things really on my wish list, but also things that I think are really necessary for, well, for the motor company to succeed long term. And Man, it, it hit a nerve. That video was actually doing really well. So I thought I would come back with another one today on another bike that I think really kind of missed the mark, but has a huge amount of potential to bring the motor company back and, and really reinvigorate some sales, especially with the millennials. Now, there's been some people throwing barbs at me, uh, barbs calling me a millennial. Uh, sure, I'm I'm 36 years old. I'm right at the cusp of, of not being a millennial. Whatever. I, I'm not offended by it. The one thing that drives me nuts is the old curmudgeonly people out there that forget that their parents hated the things they liked and their parents hated the things they liked. It's just kind of a natural progression of, well, really evolution. It's okay. But for some reason, Harley Davidson seems to cater to these customers who are aging out, a fancy word for dying, and they're not buying bikes anymore. So these older people who refuse to see Harley Davidson or accept change through the company are really crushing it. And it's clear that Harley Davidson really designs bikes around that core customer who's just kind of aging out and not really going to the dealership anymore. And the gap is those people who really had a huge part of building Harley Davidson and the new generation of people coming up and buying bikes. And for all the shots that these older guys throw at the younger crowd, if you really love Harley Davidson as a company, you would want to see him succeed long term and sell bikes to millennials who you hate. <laughs> Which it's just it, the whole thing's bizarre to me. I think that Harley should take this Electroglide they just came out with, know anything, it should just be a stripped down, basically the same bike they've been buying for years. Just have this stripped down version of this bike and charge more money for it because it seems to me that there's a whole bunch of guys out there willing to pay a premium for less stuff. And I don't know, have at it, take their money if you can. Well, millennials aren't those people. Uh, you know, the days of getting out of high school and going and getting a factory job that pays, you know, a, a livable wage to live a nice, healthy middle class and you can go out and buy your motorcycle for X amount of dollars, those days are gone. So what I want to do in this video is introduce to you guys my version of the 2020 Sport Glide. And this is a bike that I feel had a ton of potential, but just totally missed the mark. If you look at the 2019 Sport Glide, it has this, this little baby fairing that is basically useless to the point where I almost think it looks kind of comical. Uh, it's I don't know what it's trying to do, but it's far too sporty with virtually no function. I can't imagine you get a whole lot of wind protection off of that thing. And you watch videos of other people riding these bikes, you don't get a whole lot of wind protection. I think this Sport Glide should really be a, a mini version of the Street Glide. Now, if you watch Matt Laidlaw's channel, you'll know he just came out with this Coast Glide for the Battle of the Kings. Uh, it's a Harley Davidson custom build-off series. And I'll, I'll link his video up above. You should absolutely check it out. It's it's an awesome looking bike. And when I see that, that to me is, is really what I think Harley needs to have is a soft tail version of the Street Glide. And I really think it should almost just be a condensed version of that. So, this is what I created and what I think it should be. Now, a lot of guys, first of all, I know the comments guys are going to say, well, you can't do that because it's going to cannibalize your touring bikes. And Harley doesn't want to do that. Well, I disagree with that. And I know Harley just came out with the electric glide, which is a stripped down version of the street glide. But I think the the sport glide should really be a, a version of that bike for, for me, really, ultimately, I bought my Heritage because I commute back and forth to work. 99% of my riding is highway miles, uh, just bombing back and forth uh, to the office, really. I don't get a chance to get out and ride long touring jaunts. Uh, I just don't do it because, well, I have a three-year-old, I'm married, I have a full-time job, I'm running this YouTube channel. I have so many things going on in my life, I don't get a chance to go on these long journey rides that maybe a touring bike might be more cut out for. So what I want out of a motorcycle is, well, first of all, a street glide. But I love the soft tails, and it seems to me that a lot of the millennials love this monoshock soft tail format. So why not take that street glide, condense it down to a soft tail, make it your sport glide with a legitimate fairing, 
and some real bags. I tell you what, these Sport Glide bags that came out, they looked bad in my opinion. Same thing with that fairing. I think they maybe would have had a larger fairing on there and said, ah, let's get in a little bit too close to home with our Street Glide, make this thing, I mean, almost useless. And to the point where I think that bike is suffering in sales because, because of that fact. So as I do an overlay here, you can really see what I've done with this bike. I just made those bags from the Street Glide, basically put those on the Sport Glide. They're a, a little bit changed as far as dimensions go in order to fit the Sport Glide and maybe a little bit smaller of a, of a platform. And that also transitions over to the fairing. And instead of that useless little tiny fairing, give it more of the actual Street Glide treatment, including the little air vent to equalize pressure and make it a little bit more of a pleasurable ride you don't have to have any of the gauges or electronics. You can keep that stuff on the tank in a basic format like pretty much all the soft tails have. Just create kind of a little bit of an environment inside of that fairing where guys like me who are going to use my quad lock case or a rock form case and put their phone up there because, yes, old guys, people do want to be able to access their phones. It's one of the comments I get the most from all these like really old curmudgeonly Harley guys is like, put your phone away, ride your bike. You should only worry about, you know, the wind in your hair and and you don't need music. And I'll, you know what? You're old. And I'm sorry to say it, but younger people care about stuff like that. This is where you get into the pricing structure. I think the Sport Glide should be a $20,000 motorcycle. I think you should have the 114 as an option. I, I just think that Spork Light can fit that niche of a guy like me who is going to ride around town. I'm not going to really throw my wife on the back and go for big, long rides. We just don't do it. We don't have the time for it. That stuff will be years down the road. And that Spork Light can fit that niche uh, of guy who wants that Spork Light look, wants that lighter weight bike. It's 130 pounds lighter. It's, it's a far more fun bike to ride for somebody who wants to actually get out and rip around on their Harley and, and do maybe a little bit more aggressive riding and stuff like that, that fits that bill perfectly. So in my last video on the Street Glide where I go into all these details of all the things that I think the Street Glide should have, and, and again, firmly believe all of these electronics and, and creature comforts and also a restyling that looks modern, there's guys who are defending saying the 2006 Street Glide doesn't look like the 2019. And I understand that from a Harley guy who's hardcore Harley guy understands the differences, but to your average person out on the street, they probably couldn't pick the two out. And that's a problem when you're trying to get people into the dealership to plop down close to $30,000. You have to give them more. And perceived value is huge, huge. A lot of reason why Indian is gaining market share on Harley-Davidson is perceived value. They're going to start eating Harley-Davidson's lunch and it, it's, it's going to be bad. So what I'm saying is I want to see the brand of Harley-Davidson that I love elevate itself to to provide more for the same price points that they're doing now. So my ultimate hope as to why this Sport Glide does not exist is maybe Harley Davidson is coming out with a monoshock version of the Street Glide and maybe they weren't so afraid of cannibalizing their own sales on the existing platform of of their Street Glide, but maybe they're afraid that if they had a soft tail version that I present here that was competing with their new touring bike that I just proposed on my last video, well, maybe that's the rub. Maybe that's why Harley-Davidson has this Sport Glide that is a clearly different bike, basically, that would not cannibalize this new bike that's coming down the works. And that would be a whole different story. And, and I could see where maybe that would become more of a reason as to why maybe the Spark Glide is just going to go away because if you have a monoshock touring bike, which is going to be a really beefier version of, of a soft tail, if you're going to have that monoshock touring bike, maybe the Spark Glide doesn't make sense anymore. But what I will say, flat out, if you are not going to be changing the touring line and you're going to keep with the dual shock, the, the heavy bike, the heavy touring bike, then you're just going to be straight, we're not changing because Mick McNasty scares us too much. We don't want to make those changes. So we're not going to do it. We're the motor company. This is what we're doing. Well, then introduce this Sport Glide that I'm talking about now. Let the millennials have what they want because I'm telling you right now that this is what they want. A lot of guys don't have the time and energy or money to take two weeks off and travel the whole country or the whole continent. It's just not common. And to sell a bike 
to those guys who aren't going to be able to go and do those kinds of things, I think that's where a lot of the sales are suffering. You know, guys, to, to wrap this video up, I just wanted to, to really take an opportunity to, to address another bike that I thought in the Harley Davidson lineup for 2020. I hope, hope they change this and I hope this is what we're going to see. I don't, when it comes to Harley, think they're going to make these massive jumps like that. Uh, you know, I think this year they are going to be focusing, as, as you know, John Maxwell even just said, it's going to be all around the live wire, it's, and it's going to be around uh, the Pan America. But I almost wish they would just come out, swing for the fences, and and really come out with just all these new lines uh, of bikes. Here's the new Street Glide. Here's the new Sport Glide. Here's the new Pan America. Here's the new live wire. Just decimate the industry, because I'm telling you right now, Indians coming and they're coming hard and a lot of people are also buying BMWs and, and Yamahas and these other bikes come out and just lay it all on the table and say, this is Harley Davidson and, and, and we're going to fight to f stay alive, really, because it's really kind of what it's coming down to, sad but true. And all these old, again, curmudgeonly guys out there that just hate change, sorry, but if they don't change, they're going to die. And it's just that simple. So I hope that we're going to see these changes. Guys, so all my new subscribers who jumped on in the last couple of days, thank you. Super grateful. I love every minute I get to, to produce videos for, for this channel. It's, it's something I really love doing. Uh, if this is your first time, please hit that subscribe button down below for future videos. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.